What's up you guys? Welcome back to my channel and welcome to today's video. Today's video is the second video in my new beginners series. I feel like it is so good to just like rein it back in, go back to the basics. So in video one, I talk about just going to the gym. I try to make it as like simple as possible with some tips along the way as well as showing you my routine. So if you haven't seen part one, go ahead and watch that. While working out is really important and it is definitely part of this new health journey that you might be on, nutrition is just as important. And I feel like a lot of times it's not talked about as much when really that is where a huge majority of results can be seen. So in today's video, I'm gonna be talking all about nutrition, the nutrition just 101. When it comes to nutrition, I feel like a lot of people have heard the terms macronutrient and micronutrient. Those are kind of the two things I'm really gonna talk on, but then I also wanna talk on water. So I'm gonna start with micronutrients, which is basically just vitamins and minerals, things that our body needs in order to properly function, in order to have all of the tiny minuscule things that are happening in our body, reproducing cells, strengthening our bones, helping our immune system, all of those minute details that are happening inside of us that we don't really think about. I feel like a lot of times with the society now, especially when we're younger, it's like out of sight, out of mind. Like we're not actually thinking about our internal organs, the processes that our body is going through every single day to rebuild cells, rebuild tissue. So to figure out that the food we eat actually plays a role into our body, our movement, our function, into just our daily life and how good of health we have inside of us. I feel like that is why I'm so excited to share this video because I'm freaking passionate about this and I feel like way too many times it's all about what you look like and aesthetic and all that when really it's like, no, eat good foods in order to properly fuel your body so that you can have high function and that you can literally live a long and happy life. And even when you're older, you're 100 years old, you're still a little bit better off because you took care of your body now. We're learning to do it correctly now so that in the future and as we keep growing, we're building upon these habits, this new lifestyle change, which is not easy, but we're building on this lifestyle change that we've had so that it's gonna help us in the future so we can be healthy for our entire life, not just right now while we're young, and we have a high metabolism in. So let's get back into micronutrients. So I'm gonna start by listing some vitamins, examples of some, and then what they do for our bodies, the processes that they help with, and then give some specific examples of foods that will contain these vitamins. Starting off with a vitamin A, this is gonna be a lot of orange foods, which is an easy way to remember that. Some good benefits when it comes to vitamin A, this nutrient is important to our vision, our growth, cell division, reproductive, and immunity. Vitamin A also has antioxidant properties, and here is a list of foods that you can get vitamin A from. Next up is vitamin B. There are eight different types of vitamin B, but I'm only gonna talk about three. The first is gonna be vitamin B7, which is biotin. A lot of you know that is hair, skin, and nails. Next is vitamin B9. This is also known as folate and is super important when you are pregnant. It helps aid in the production of DNA and RNA, which is basically our body's genetic material. You can find this in dark leafy vegetables like broccoli, Brussels sprouts, spinach, romaine lettuce, asparagus, and other foods. It also works well with vitamin B12, which helps keep our body's blood and nerve cells healthy and also helps us make DNA. Next up is vitamin C, and I feel like a lot of people associate vitamin C with citrus fruits and then also helping with our immune system. Vitamin C is necessary for the growth, development, and repair of all body tissues. It helps heal wounds and form scar tissue, repair and maintain cartilage, bones, and teeth, and then also helps aid in iron absorption. And of course, helping with our immune system, which we love. And yes, you can find vitamin C in a lot of your citrus fruits like oranges, grapefruit, lemons, limes, but you can also find it in cantaloupe, tomatoes, raspberries, strawberries, blueberries, papaya, and so many more. Next up is vitamin D, which is extremely important for calcium absorption. Our body cannot absorb calcium without it. And calcium is good for our bones, which we'll talk about in a little bit. One of the best sources of vitamin D is sunshine. So get outside, your skin naturally absorbs vitamin D, but it can also be found in a couple of foods. Next we have vitamin K, which can be found in a lot of dark green leafy vegetables. 
and this vitamin helps make various proteins that are needed for blood clotting. Clotting is a normal function that helps stop our body from bleeding out or bleeding too much when we get hurt. So here's a little list of some vegetables that contain vitamin K, again a lot of dark leafy greens, and my favorite which is broccoli. Next up are minerals, and in case you were wondering the difference between vitamins and minerals, is vitamins are organic substances, which means they are made by plants or animals. And then minerals are inorganic elements that come from soil or water and they're absorbed by plants or eaten by animals. And our body needs both vitamins and minerals. So I'm gonna talk about three main minerals. And the first is calcium. Our body needs calcium to build and maintain strong bones, but it also can help our heart, muscles, and nerves. They also need calcium to function properly. So some food that includes calcium is of course milk cheese and yogurt those dairy products but I know not everybody has dairy so broccoli is also extremely high in calcium and spinach next up is iron and our body uses iron to make hemoglobin which is a protein in the red blood cells and that helps carry oxygen from the lungs to all parts of our body which is extremely crucial if you ask me Iron can be found in meat, especially steak, but again, I know some are vegan, so spinach and broccoli are also high in iron as well as beans. Next up is potassium, and our body needs potassium to help our muscles contract, help maintain fluid balance, and maintain a normal blood pressure. If you ask me, helping our muscles contract in the gym, I mean, like, give me a banana, let's go. Okay, so now that I've talked about a lot of micronutrients and fruits and veggies, I wanna talk about maybe some tips and ways that you can implement that and be able to eat more in your life. I wanna say, first of all, if you are new to this journey, it's gonna take some time for you to really have an appetite and really enjoy fruits and veggies. Sometimes that is a really hard toss up. When you're so used to having processed foods, which again, all things in moderation, there's nothing wrong with that. But when that is a majority of your diet and then you're switching to having like broccoli as part of your dinner, it's like, that's the last thing I wanna eat. You know what I mean? Cause your taste buds, are so different and so it's gonna take time. So be patient with yourself along this process. The second thing I will say is to keep fruit where you can see it. I love this one because I feel like the more accessible food is, the easier I'm gonna have it. Like a bowl of cereal is so quick, okay? Spoon, bowl, pour cereal, milk, that's a meal. Whereas if you try to keep fruit that accessible, like bananas on the counter, or apples on the counter, or fridge, you can go in and grab that and it's super quick, it's mindless, and you don't have to think about it too much. So trying to have that accessible versus like shoving it in the back of our fridge. We all have those like little vegetable drawers where we just like shove our spinach thinking we're gonna eat it, but then we never do and it's been like three weeks and it's all wilted and nasty and like the bag is dripping. Yeah, so let's not do that. Let's try to have our produce more accessible so it's more inviting and again it's gonna take time it's gonna take time to have that as a habit but I'm somebody who hates to waste food so like if I buy it I have to eat it in some shape or form so try it out and just try to make it more accessible that way it's a little bit more of a habit it's a little bit more realistic number three I would say to explore some new produce so next time as you shop you know it all starts with grocery shopping, right? Like if you're not buying these foods, you're not gonna necessarily be eating them unless if you're eating them out at a restaurant. So you have to start with actually purchasing them. So find some fun recipes on Pinterest, try to explore some new ones and just get out there and try them. Okay, and then the last one is gonna be make smoothies. I feel like anytime I have been struggling with getting in my fruits or my vegetables, making a smoothie makes life so much easier. And that's just because you can throw it in a blender and drink it. A lot of times fruit is really sweet, so it also like can help mask some veggies. Like if you throw a cucumber or spinach in there and you're just trying to get accustomed to that taste, I think that's awesome. I love to throw yogurt in my smoothies too to help incorporate a little bit more protein. and. See Seriously, smoothies are a good way to go, especially if you're just trying to get a little bit more of that in your diet. Now I'm gonna talk about macronutrients. Again, these are the protein, fats, and carbs. I feel like a lot of people, if you're in the health and fitness industry or even in this world, you hear the word macros all the time. People are always trying to share, this is the macro count and you know, it's everywhere, okay? So breaking this down, even again, macro is short for the term macronutrients. And macros are just those three categories of nutrients that we eat the most of and that help provide us with the most of our energy, protein, carbs, and fats. 
So when people say that they're counting their macros, they're just counting the amount of grams of protein, carb, and fat that they're consuming as opposed to counting the number of calories. I'm going to first start out with protein and it does a lot for us. The main thing I want to talk about is how it helps build and repair. When we work out, we're breaking down our muscles, our tissues, and then we use protein to help rebuild that. So that is one reason why protein is really important. Here's a small list of some great protein sources. I know a lot of you are vegan or vegetarian, so I tried to include non-meat options as well. Now on to carbs. I definitely feel like carbs get the worst reputation, especially when it comes to like weight gain or just food. I feel like people are always like, oh, let me cut out carbs. But you guys, carbs are our body's main fuel source, meaning at bare minimum, the energy that we need in order to complete our daily activities like workout, go to our job, take the kids for a walk, walk the dog, whatever it is, we need carbs. Sometimes carbs are referred to as simple versus complex or whole versus refined to break that down a little bit. Complex or whole carbs contain the fiber found naturally in the food so it provides us those vitamins and minerals that we need. These carbs are broken down by our body slower so they don't cause a rapid spike in our insulin. Some examples of this are oats, fruit like banana, strawberry, you've got wheat bread, sweet potatoes, and then when it comes to the simple or refined carbs, these are processed more and have had the natural fiber removed or changed. And these are broken down quickly by our body to use this energy. So these are like candy, baked goods, Rice Krispie treats, soda, sugary cereal, things like that. And yes, that includes my favorite cookies that I eat every night. I love them so much. They make me happy. But here's a little list of some examples that you can grab at the grocery store. Screenshot this if you want and add it to your little list. And lastly are fats. Now, I feel like this also gets a bad rep, but it's really important to our health overall. Again, we need all three of these. Some benefits to fat is it helps us absorb vitamins. So vitamin A, D, E, and K are all fat soluble vitamins. It also helps support our brain and eye health, getting in those omega-3 fatty acids, which are extremely crucial for us. And omega-3 fatty acids can be found in salmon and chia seeds. Essential fatty acids also aid in wound healing and clotting. And of course, here's a quick list of some good sources of fat that you can screenshot and keep. Ultimately, our body needs vitamins, minerals, carbs, fats, and protein in order to properly function and have the best health. So once we have a really powerful reason why, why we should be eating fruits, vegetables, why we should be eating protein, carbs, and fats, why we should try to get our nutrition from whole nutrient-dense foods, once we have that underlying why of that this is like deeper than just what's on the surface, this is actually what's going on in our bodies, I feel like for me at least, I am so much more wanting and driven to take care of myself because every time I eat more nutrient dense foods, I know I'm taking care of my body on the inside. And for me, that is so empowering and I just love it. It makes me feel so good. So now that I've talked about all that, I kind of want to touch on whole nutrient dense foods, something that I say quite often. So to break this up, Whole foods is a single ingredient. That's something like an apple, a chicken breast. They are exactly what they say. It's not multiple ingredients combined to make something else. It is a pure whole ingredient that just like is given to us on this earth. Nutrient dense is where it's saying it is full of nutrients. It is packed with vitamins, minerals. It has protein or it's a good source of carbs or fat, whatever it is. It's doing things and it's nurturing us. So when we eat it, it's actually doing things in our body instead of, again, processed food is not bad, but a lot of times it falls flat on those nutrients that our body naturally needs. This is not to make us feel guilty about eating processed food. This is just saying our body actually physically needs certain things in our diet in order to help it function properly. So trying to prioritize those whole nutrient dense foods, that's gonna be the best. I also really want to touch on water because water is so necessary for us. It is a life sustaining liquid. Like if anything, I think all of us can do better about our water intake. It is something that should be such a high priority on all of our lists for many reasons. So I'm going to talk about a few. To start out, the adult body is made up of about 60% of water. So that should tell you a little bit of how important it is to be able to drink water. Some of the benefits from this list are it helps maximize our physical performance, again, hitting our strong workouts, as well as helping aid in our digestion. It also helps aid in cognitive function, like 
helps us give us brain power so that we can think because we have that water to be able to properly function at a higher level. Keeps our skin bright, helps prevent dehydration, which then has a lot of issues. It also helps with nutrient absorption, fight off illnesses. There are so many benefits to water. Make sure you're getting it in. Adult humans are made up of 60% of water, you guys. That is a lot. You guys, I freaking talk about this all the time, but get a water bottle you like and you love and you enjoy. Nothing is better than a cup that you just love to sip water on, okay? Again, this is something that's tough. I know a lot of people hate water. I know that, it's weird. Like people will be like, I literally cannot drink water. And I'm like, you gotta work on that. You gotta work on that. So that can be a very small priority for you this year. Try to drink more water. That's gonna wrap up this video, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found it helpful. Give it a thumbs up if you do. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and I'll see you all in the next episode. Bye.